Welcome to the Riverdon at KEDV. Now, I was lucky enough on the weekend just gone to have won a two-day festival on the venue. It's somewhere I'd never actually fished before until this weekend gone, and it's quite a good match length. There's quite a lot of skimmers, some roach, some perch. The skimmers are on a feeder, the roach are on the pole, perch on short pole with worms. And I've brought you back to the section I was on the first day to run you through the tactics and the bait I used to catch these fish. So let's get down to the peg and I'll run you up through it all. So the bait might look like a lot of bait, but in reality, it's not actually that much. I'm going to talk you through the ground bait mix I used to begin with. Now, because I'm quite lazy, um, I decided to literally mix up a bag of Sweet Skimmer and a bag of Black River from Sonya Baits, 50-50. And the, it's because I wanted one ground bait mix for all. So I actually set up a feeder to fish across on both days for skimmers, because that's how they catch them. And the Sweet Skimmer is great for skimmers. It's full of biscuit full of it's really sweet and it's just a ground bait skimmers and bream love and i actually don't think roach mind it as well and i caught a lot the day before i went pleasure fishing had a little bit of a practice caught loads of roach on it so i was happy to use it and the black river just adds a little bit of stickiness to it so i can make it into balls the water's really deep here on the pole top six in depth so that's my ground bait mix i needed a mix that was going to go to the bottom and the river adds a stickiness skimmer adds the skimmer element hopefully give me a good chance of catching the skimmers so that's that and what I actually do is I mix those two together, get a portion out for the feeder, and then to the pole, I add half a bag of this Tear de River Sensor soil, which is really heavy soil, just gets the ground bait where I want it on the bottom, where I'm gonna pot it in, so that's that. And the actual baits, it looks like a lot, of, a lot of baits, but it's not actually that much. I took some castors, some hemp, some fluoro maggots, fluoro pinkies, red maggots, and some worms, but to be honest, didn't actually use that many baits, it was quite cheap. Like on the festival, I took a pint of casters a day, a tin of hemp a day, half a pint of fluoro maggots does you for the weekend, half a pint of fluoro pinkies, half a pint of red maggots will do you for the whole festival. So you don't actually need a lot of volume of bait, you just need some variety so you can play around with your hook baits. Right, so we're nearly ready to introduce some bait now. I've just plumbed up and this section is really, really deep. It's top six of my pole. So I've set up two rigs for it, which I'll run you through for a bit. But for now, I'm going to run you through the bait I'm going to introduce at the start. Um, we've just been spun a little bit of a curveball with a massive boat coming through. And when we got it this morning, it was gin clear. And you won't believe the colour difference now. It's all coloured up. And I don't know what's going to happen now, but um, I'll talk you through the bait we're going to feed anyway. So to begin with, I'm just going to chop some worms up. I'm just going to get a pot full of these worms here. Nice medium dendras, like half a pot of these. And I like to chop them up really, really fine because I think the roach I caught on the weekend, I'd try and catch a big stamp and there's quite a lot of little ones here. And I think introducing the worms gets me a better chance of catching some bigger roach. And also there's quite a lot of little perch along here. And we're fishing for 10 to 12 pound of fish to do really well. And I think the, any little perch is a bonus. And I think the bigger roach we catch, obviously, the better. So I'd like to get these into a pulp to really add some flavour into the water. And with the water going this more dirty colour, a bit of smell is always good. So there we are. We've almost got like half a pot now of completely minced up worm. Like that. And what I'm actually going to feed today, I'm actually just going to pop my bait in. So I'm just going to get eight handfuls of my ground bait from this side here. One, two... Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's basically a full bowl of my ground bait. And that's what I'm going to actually introduce at the start. And I'm going to get my worms. I'm going to put about half of them in. So it's about a third of my big pot of worms I'm going to introduce at the start, which is quite a lot. I'm going to add like a pinch full of hemp pinch full of the pinkies because I don't know what's going to happen it might be hard we might have to fish pinkies and a few of the casters as well just because I like some casters 
but it's not a lot of feed that in the amount of ground that I'm going to feed because the more bait you introduce at the start, I find you lot miss a lot of bites on rivers if you put loads and loads of feed in. And also, we're only fishing for £10 odd. And I think you just don't need a lot of volume in the ground bait. I think they sit over the ground bait. And obviously, you want a little bit there to hold them, but you want them to eat your hook bait, basically. I think just having a little bit is just about right. And that looks... I want a few more... A few more everfins, a few more hemp. A few casters and a few more pinkies, I reckon. Just to add a bit more into him. He looks lovely now. So basically there's an odd bit of everything in him. There's an odd pinky, an odd bit of worm, an odd caster. And that just looks about right to me. Not too much bait at the start in the ground bait. So I'm just going to ball him up now. I only give him a few squeezes because the soil will just get him down. I also make them quite small so I can actually ship them out without breaking the pole. That's quite important. And what I do is at the minute I'm just making them quite round like so and I flatten them off when I put them in the pot just so when I pop them in they um, they go where I want them on the bottom they don't roll away but I'll show you that when I'm about to put them in the pot so we've made five there six seven and we've got a little bit spare just to top up with in a bit so there's me eight balls quite a bit of worm in them an odd pinky and odd cast and a bit of hemp I'm just going to wash my hands off in the water I always like to wash my hands before I ship out right so I'm about to cut my balls in now and it's uneven bottom so it's important that when your balls go in you know where they've landed so what I like to do is I make them round to start with and then just as I'm about to cut them in I give them a squeeze with my palm so it's got one edge of its flat so when it goes in it can rest somewhere and rest where you want them to be potted in so i'm going to whack him in a pot and i'm going to cup him in another important fact that when you are cupping them in you cup them in slightly downstream of where you want to fish because i found that where you catch a roach is upstream of where the balls go in so it's important that you give yourself some room to put your rig in, not over your bait, before it gets to the bait. And another thing, the reason I am cupping them in and not throwing them is because they could land anywhere thrown. Um, I just think it's too deep. With it being like a top six of my pole, it could just go anywhere. And there's also, I've found out, lots of pike in this venue. So cupping them in was a good little trick to avoid less pike, because pike come to the commotion of balls going in quite regularly on this kind of venue. And it's quite noticeable. I had less pike problems than other people. So that was a good little tip that worked out quite well. And what I am doing when I am cupping these in, is just spreading them over a little bit of an area. Not whacking them all down one hole. Putting some right on the full of a pole, like, just down and slightly down again and some with this dolly bit literally just behind me so there's a little bit of an area made so I want to catch on this line for most of the day I don't want them centralised on one little spot I want to get lots of fish there sat there happy over an area where I can catch them quite tiring this but once it's settled in it's in and you don't have to do it again you might have to top up a few times but once it's in it's in only got two more to do now two more go to the full extreme where I want them there Right, so we're about to start fishing now. I'm going to start on my lighter rig. 
And to begin with, I'm going to whack on a fluoro maggot, I reckon. Something visual, something they could pick out and see what's there. Put it nicely on the up, wet the elastic. Chip him out, flick him out. What I like to do is flick him out and get my float so it's about a foot above the surface and it'll just slowly lower him in. The good advantage of these pencil floats is they just sit so fast. And what I like to do, what I found to do on this venue is as the float's going along, just literally hold the pole above the float. So like fish like commercial, hey, there's a fish straight away. Nice little fish straight away. So what he is. Oh no, it's not. It's not even a fish. Right, we're starting again, Tom. Right, so I'm just going to flick him in like that, and what I do is hold it a foot above the surface, and these pencil floats sit so fast. Just slowly lower him in like that, and he's in. And what I found to do on this venue was literally just let the float run and hold the pole, literally. Let the line go slack and just hold the pole straight above the float like you're fishing a commercial, but just let it run through like that. That looked like a little bite straight away. And what you can do with pencils is just lower him back in and just let him go again instead of having to lift the whole float back out to reset it. And this was just the most efficient way of catching that. Was a, there we go, that's a little fish straight away. It's a great sign, that is. Oh, it's like a little, I don't know what it is, it's like a little, little hybrid roachy skimmer thing, that is. It's a weird little fish. That's it. We'll repeat that. Whack on another fluoro maggot. I like fluoro maggots because they're just so visual in the water. I just think if anything's there, over the ground bait straight away, we're just going to catch them on a maggot. And what we do is just repeat the process. Literally just put my rig straight in front of me, upstream of where my bait is, and just going through the same routine each time. Slowly lowering my float in now. Let it relax with the pole float, pole tip just above the float and just follow it down. Oh, that was a bite, we missed him. Good thing about those pencil floats, they just sit straight back in the water so fast so you can continue your run down. There we go, there's another little fish. So this is looking a great sign for today. Only little to begin with. But we'll take them, little roach this time. Probably an ounce. So yeah, we'll keep carrying catch on one of these. See if we catch if we catch another one of those tiny fish, we might whack a caster on next chuck for a try. And that's where all the varied baits come in, because you can just keep trying the different baits to try and catch a better stamp of fish. On the actual day, when I drew this section, worms were really good on the hook. I had a quite a nice little run fishing little worms, so we can try them in a bit. Casters could be good. Gone straight under there, missed that. Yeah, caster can be good. I've caught, a, caught some perch on red maggots actually on the day. So they could be quite a good option. one. It's looking like the same stamp as the last one. Oh, it's slightly better. We'll take him. Might be two ounces in. We'll just try cast and see if we catch a bigger one. It's all just about going through the motions and trying the different little plates to try and catch a better stamp of fish. All the time trying to work out what's going to be best for the whole day. Because once you suss it out, you can just settle on that bait then and just catch as many as you can. Lock him in.
looks like. So it means might be a slightly better road set again on Castor, so we'll carry on with Castor. Just hooking him through the top and making sure he's nice and straight on the hook. It's quite important because sometimes they kick off at and sit at a funny angle, you can miss some bites. So you want everything, your hook, on the hook to be quite streamlined on the hook, quite straight off the hook. And these pencil floats just sit lovely on this venue where it's just deep water, quite small fish, less resistance to the fish, so you actually hit more bites. a lot of small fish, little roach and pommies and some perch and it's going all right but I've topped up once and it brought a good response, I caught some better better roach, a little run of better roach but the fish have just gone a little bit small again, I'm missing quite a lot of bites because I think the roach is quite small and I think if I top it up again I might get another run of little roach. Some little roach I'm on about. Like that. Little tiny roach they are. So I'm just going to catch one more. And then we're going to top it up. What I've done, because there's quite a lot of fish in the peg now, is cut out any um, pinkies in my mix. don't want to actually feed any pinkies. And I'm just topping up with a big ball full of hemp and casters to try and catch some better stamped fish, really. It's all about just in trying to prove the stamp of the fish. I've just got a flora maggot on at the minute because no matter what hook bait I put on, I catch the same stamp of fish really. That's another one. Still another little little roach. A little bit better, but we'll top them up and try and catch a better one. Just started to rain now actually, which isn't ideal. So we'll just put this down. And put this down and feed. Get the big pot out. Put him on the pole. Right, I'm putting a nice handful of hemp and custards. All the worms I've got left in a lot. Put them in a ball. Nice big two hander like we started feeding at the start. Flatten an edge so it doesn't roll away, like so. We'll just pot them in the same spot we potted all the others. Ooh, close. Dunk him in. Alright, and we'll start fishing. I've made a few adjustments to my rig from earlier. Started on an 18, N10, so 9, pre tied one. And now I'm on a 16 to 010 because the fish, fishing's quite good. And I've also shortened my lash between my float and my pole tip. So I can get my rig just on a top 5 now. Which makes you so much more efficient. You can get in and out quicker. So basically, you can catch more fish. 
I'm not having to run my full out very far before I get by. It just means you can be a bit more efficient. Number six elastic helps with that. It's not too light, but it's also not too heavy so it bumps fish. I just think it's the perfect elastic for the job. That's the bite there. Another little roach. But she's just on a flora mag at the minute. Any hook better put on, to be honest, is catching me some fish. Wait a little bit too long on cast and they're not any bigger. So I'm just trying to whack a hook bait on fast, pop it in to the bottom and catch the fish as fast as I can. These pencil floats are so good for that. There's just no resistance to the fish in this deep water. I'm just not really missing too many bites at all. Obviously I missed a bite then. <laughs> Right, so the silverfish sport, the little roach and that, it's just dying off a little bit and I might be able to catch a few little fish on this, perch, on this flat float. Might be a better fish there or a little run of perch maybe. Just, so just another form presentation to hopefully just keep putting some fish in the net. As the festival has run on weight over the two days, it was important to not have too many slow spells in your match. So obviously... If you can catch some little perch or a better fish, great. Like that's, I've just hooked a perch now. Just diving down, isn't he? Yeah, just a little perch, but it's another fish in the net. Just a little one, but we got him. So if you have a little run of these, when your peg's dead, it's always a handy little addition to your net. It's probably a four ounce perch there, first put in, trying for one. So we'll give that another go, I'm just on a little section of worm. And this kind of thing actually happened on my day one match, a few pegs from here. And the peg just went a little bit dead for roach, had a few problems with pike. Just put the flat float on down the peg and caught like a little runner perch. I also caught a few big roach on it as well, so. They were nice, but at any time, there's supposed to be loads of skimmers in this venue, but as it's clear at the minute, they didn't really feed. But at any moment, you might hook a bonus skimmer or a bream or anything, really. So it's well worth giving yourself a chance of a better fish. Just hooked another little perch here straight away. Yeah, he's a nicer perch. But all these are just little bonus fish in your net. Well worth catching. He might be six ounces in. So two chucks there, two perch. And if it goes slow, like it might do, might not get any more bites after this one. Go back and hopefully catch some more perch. Roach, sorry. But while it's still going on, we might as well give it another go. just holding it still, just slightly downstream from where I've been fishing for the roach. I think the perch, they hang around the feed and at the back edge of it. I think that's the place to fish for them. They don't normally go too much above your bait, I've found. They didn't on the weekend anyway. And we'll literally give this a minute and if it doesn't go with the perch, we'll put it down and we'll just go back and try and catch some more roach. Just lifting and dropping it, trying to entice a perch on. So yeah, we've given it a little while now. Oh. But if it doesn't go under in the next few seconds, we'll ship back. Yeah, it is, it is. Another little, per Another little perch. Just a 
little one. But I think now's the time to go back and try and catch some roach on the pencil float. Right, so I'm back fishing for roach now on my pencil float. And I just want to give a little bit of a summary of the day. Plucked a little perch here, that's all. Shipping back first. A little tiny perch. So yeah, my summary of my day, starting with the baits. I think it's really important to give yourself an option of different hook baits. So like I talked about before, I brought casters, hemp, pinkies, flora maggots, red maggots, some casters. Just gives yourself the option of changing hook baits. You don't need a lot, like half a pint would have done me for both days of the festival, apart from casters and hemp probably. Probably would have brought a tin of hemp, so it's more than half a pint. And with the casters, I brought a pint of casters a day, so it's not a lot of bait, not that expensive really. But what was important was bringing some worms, so I brought a kilo of worms for the two days, and I think putting the worms in the ground bait was a little bit of an edge I had to catch a, a better stamper roach. So I often topped up with balls full of worms and casters and hemp like I've shown already. And that was the best way to top up. I didn't lose feed on any of the days because I just felt my loose feed was going nowhere near the pole. I just think when it's that deep, like top five, top six, I just feel loose feeding is not the one. Got a little bleak on. So yeah, that's baits. Talking through the other things I think were important with my rig choices. On this whole venue, I set up pencil floats for fishing for roach, and I also set up a flat float each day. Pencil floats are just so good because they fish really fast in deep water. Uh, there's not a lot of flow, so you don't need to hold back onto your float like I've shown you. I've just been letting it run, and I think there's no resistance when the fish pick up your hook bait, so you miss less bites like that straight away. See, I think flat. Pencil floats are really important. Look up, he's a nicer roach he is. There he is, lovely. And basically my rigs were just bulk down rigs. Just a few droppers. A few droppers below. Just to get the bait to the bottom, because there's loads of little fish in this venue. And you just want to get your rigs past them. Quite a lot of little bleak as well when we drop, so you need to get it past them. And just being as um, efficient as you can was best. So obviously today I've shortened my line between my float and my pole tip. That was really good. So I can just do little lift into the float. I'm fishing a top five instead of a top six if I can. So I can swing the fish faster. And yeah, all these things add up so you can put more fish in the nets. So lastly, I just want to say a big thank you to the organisers of the festival. They ran a brilliant festival. And if you want to fish any of these stretches of the River Don here, it's on the Rotherham and District waters. And it's a day ticket on the bank.